this morning, we're going to continue on from where we left off. I'll just do a quick recap of where we left off, and then we'll continue from there. Okay, so far, we have been, we've learned about various parts of the cell, but we've only focused on certain parts. Okay, we just came from the nucleus. I'm just going to drop half the nucleus in the cell, huh? We just came from the nucleus, and inside the nucleus we, were, we learned that there is DNA. Okay. Uh, we also learned that our DNA contains information. Information or recipes to produce all the proteins that we have in our body. We call these recipes genes. So if I were to just take a segment of the DNA, if I just take a segment of the DNA, we call this a gene. A gene is a sequence that holds for a protein. before we left off for your quiz, the first thing, the first process we learned was that DNA being the recipe book, uh, we don't just borrow it out of the library to do all our cooking. But instead, we make a complementary copy of it. So from our DNA, what our cell does is that it will synthesize a single strand of RNA This RNA, as we say, is a complementary copy. It's not really a copy per se. It's a complement of the template strand. We refer to this particular RNA as the mRNA, or the messenger RNA. This RNA is then taken out of the cell, right, where it will be translated to produce what you want by the ribosome. Okay, it will produce your protein. Uh, we have a name for these two processes, these two steps. The first step over here, we refer to as transcription. The second step we learned was translation. In your quiz, you were asked to transcribe. Yeah, you were asked to transcribe in your quiz. Right, so that was step one. Step two. Okay, today we're going to move on from here. We're going to see where your protein goes. Right? Uh, proteins have many functions. They need to go to many places. And the aim of today, we're going to learn how proteins are trafficked across within the cell. When I say traffic, we imagine movement. Right? We're going to learn how where proteins go, how proteins are brought around the cell and out of the cell after it has been synthesized. But today I'm going to start with a quick recap. This is a photograph of an animal cell. You may refer to your previous CA, CA 3.2. I'd like everyone to try this quick exercise. Although we didn't ask of you uh, this particular skill in the quiz, uh, very likely I'm going to see if you can do this next time around. Can you, to the best of your ability, try to identify as many parts of the cell as possible? You may refer to CA 3.2 because you've done it once, but I'll let you to try again. Here with your partner, please identify as many parts as possible. Thank you. 
by the plus CA will be useful to you, CA3 by 2. We've done it once, we we'll just try again this morning. Last time round, we only gave you snapshots of the various parts, but now we provide you an entire cell. That's what is uh, normally done. We show you an entire cell rather than small little segments of it. There are actually mitochondria inside this cell. Can you spot the mitochondria? A minute more. Try. Must try, ah. Huh? Every opportunity in class is a chance to practice. You ready? Yeah, I might. Yeah, I hope at least you identify the biggest thing in there. Huh? What's that big, big thing, ah? Huh? Right smack in the middle. Okay, you identify the nucleus. Okay, the nucleus should be the biggest thing there. Okay, so, biggest thing there should be the nucleus. How do I tell this is the nucleus? Okay, so this bullet point I put up there is just extra information. How I normally tell that something is a nucleus is by the size. Usually the nucleus is the biggest thing in the cell. Okay, so if you want to identify. Okay, next. The next easiest thing to identify is the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Do you see any membrane sacs? that have a lot of dots on the outside. Actually, that's everywhere. So, I pointed one segment over here. You can actually point to a lot of other places, yeah? But I pointed to this part over here. Oops. Up to you where you want to point. Any one of these sacs that come with uh, ribosomes dotted on the outside, those are rough endoplasmic reticulum. So anything that looks like that, okay, it looks like a sheet like pancake, and then lots of dots on the outside. That the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, if you cannot spell it, it goes like that. Rough endo 
plasmic reticulum. I'm going to be writing RER for short from now onwards. And I expect you to know they are referring to the blood and blood plasmic reticulum. Okay, next. Actually, if you look at the nucleus, you may be even able to find some pores, some holes in the nucleus. Let's zoom in to see. And you are quite behind me, so you can see like this one. Okay, so I think over here, you can actually see one nuclear pore. In this part over here, there's actually one hole. Okay, I zoom out a bit. Okay, there are pores in the nucleus. These pores are how the mRNA can get out of the cell. Sorry, get out of the nucleus. Yeah, we say that uh, mRNA needs to get out of the nucleus. Well, it needs to get out two pores. They don't bash their way through the nucleus. Identify all the ribosomes. All the dots on the surface of the RER, those are ribosomes. So I have also pointed to some of them. I feel like I'm hot. Uh. Okay, do not follow this, this is wrong. Okay, let's label the mitochondria here. Like this one over here, this one over here, this one over here. These are actually all mitochondria. Okay, if you look very closely, you zoom in, you can see on the inside there are a lot of inner folds. Yes? So yeah. mitochondria oh, okay, good question. Uh, can the cell have more than one mitochondria can? Uh, it depends on how much energy the cell needs. Some cells need a lot of energy, you'll find a lot of mitochondria. They are what produces the body's uh, chemical energy. Okay. Other things I've labeled, I've even labeled the membrane of the nucleus. I call it the nuclear membrane. Okay. Bear in mind that the nucleus is bound by a phospholipid a bilayer also. So it's a nuclear membrane. Yes, Jeremy. Oh, are there ribosomes in the nucleus, is it? Not that I'm aware of. I think there may be, uh, but not that I'm aware of. There are actually ribosomes inside the mitochondria for your information. Okay, later on we'll talk about where you find ribosomes. Okay, what, what else do I have? The last one is the Golgi apparatus. There's actually Golgi apparatus here. You see this part over here? Okay. Okay, this part over here you can see a lot of stacks, a lot of vesicles coming in and going out. There's the Golgi apparatus. If okay, you look from afar, then you can see better. Try to look up close, that's very hard to see. Yes? Uh, this one, uh, this is also a mitochondria. Okay? It's just that it's a mitochondria, look, you look at it from a different perspective. Mitochondria looks like a bee. And then on the inside, there are a lot and a lot of folds. The inner membrane is highly folded. If you look at it from the top view, it will just look like a circle. But you will still see all the folds. Okay, so it depends on how you look at it. Okay, uh, you identify as much as possible. So these are the things I could find. I don't know if you found any more. Sorry? Okay, 
So where is the smooth endoplasmic reticulum? Personally, I couldn't really find smooth endoplasmic reticulum. The smooth one tends to look like small little circles, looks like tubes, and they shouldn't have any dots around them. But personally, I couldn't find any um, anything that quite fits that bill. So I didn't label. Yes? This one? Uh? In the left, okay, yes. Oh, could this be the smooth, is it? Perhaps, could be. Uh, to me, I didn't label that as a smooth because I felt these look more like vesicles that are going to join the Golgi apparatus. So I, I, that's why I didn't label it as such. But could it be? I won't say that it cannot be. Like, because smooth and no plasma reticulum sometimes can look like this. Yes, Alpha? Can things like go through the loop? What thing? Like mRNA. Yeah. Oh, okay. Say again. So, can mRNA? I can't go out to the membrane. Uh, cell membrane is it? Yeah, nuclear membrane. Oh, why can't the mRNA go out of the nuclear through the uh the nuclear? Yeah. Why can't it? Yeah, why can't it? It can. Oh, it's it goes through the nuclear pores. You know, okay, you know the nuclear membrane comes with a lot of holes? Yeah. yeah, that's where the mRNA goes out from. Oh, only at the holes. Okay. Uh, yeah, it goes out to the holes. How about when there's no holes? Uh, there will definitely be holes, but let's say there are no holes, right? It cannot come out. Oh. The mRNA is really big. Okay, it's a very big molecule, huh? Now, how about um, may I understand where this question came from? What do you think about this? No, but the nuclear membrane has the hydro. Ah. Right, okay, then maybe we want to look at the structure of uh, mRNA. Actually, mRNA right, has a lot of uh, polar groups, so it won't be able to pass through the hydrophobic core of the nuclear membrane even if it wants to. Uh, mRNA is also extremely big uh, compared to uh, usual things that can slip through, so it will need a uh, hole or some sort. Yeah. Henry? How do you label the nuclear core? How do I label the nuclear core? Of course, I draw a line, then after that, I Okay, what do you mean? No, like, there's no hole there, Okay, there's no hole, uh, okay. Okay, you gotta look very carefully, uh. it looks nothing like that. The me if you look at that part of the uh, nuclear membrane, it goes like that. Then after that, uh, it goes like that. Okay, this part is the hole. Okay, zoom in, see if you can see it. Okay, so those are the holes, huh? Okay. Okay, everyone label what they need to label. Okay. Now I'd like you to focus on one thing, the ribosomes. You know that this last step to produce proteins is carried out by these things called ribosomes. Right? Okay, my question for you now is, where can you find these ribosomes? Okay, can you discuss with your friend? Actually, we went through this before, so we go through as a quick recap. Where can you find ribosomes? Okay, I think you can find 3.2 or so. So where can you find ribosomes? It's very important, huh? You need to know where it can be found before you can produce these proteins. They are our chefs. Okay, they will read the recipe.
that translate our mRNA into proteins. Okay, uh, okay I just need one location. Uh, so the next person I call. Okay, so so I'll say it's outside the nucleus. That's right. Uh. Three up. Uh. Just one thing you can find ribosomes. The rough endoplasmic reticulum, that's the most uh, common that you find uh, ribosomes. You know, we just mentioned the rough endoplasmic reticulum. All these sacs over here are these layers, that's where you can find ribosomes. That's the first one. Must take note of where you can find ribosomes. Huh? Number one, you can find them on the RER. Okay, so now I'm going to draw in the RER. Right? Here's the RER. Now just draw a small segment. You can find a lot of ribosomes on the RER. That's a very important thing to take note of. Okay, so start. Number one, it's where you can find ribosomes. You can actually find ribosomes else one more location. Yes. Right, yeah. These dots I'm drawing represent the ribosomes. Yeah, they're really tiny. If you look at the RER over here, you also can see tiny dots. Those are the ribosomes. Ribosomes are really small. Okay, some of you may be wondering, what exactly are ribosomes? Okay? Uh, ribosomes are made up of two things for your information. Ribosomes are in part protein. It's also made up of RNA, called rRNA, ribosomal RNA. Just for FYI, I'm going to put FYI here. Okay, so this location one where you can find ribosomes. Location two, where else can you find ribosomes? Sissy? Sorry? Okay, everyone, please look in the CA3.2. You can find ribosomes at one more location. Okay, thank you, Shamey. You can find cytoplasm. Uh, you can find ribosomes also in the cytoplasm. Three floating around. So there are ribosomes here. There are also ribosomes three floating around. Okay, so please take note. There are two kinds of ribosomes. There are number one, bound ribosome. Number two, there are free ribosomes. Yes? Then how about the mitochondria? The what? The, the, my, the mitochondria. Okay. <laughs> what about the mitochondria? Ah, what about? What type of ribosomes? Ah, okay. So actually, inside the mitochondria, there are ribosomes also. I just said we don't really teach that uh, at your level. Uh, that one, you take it as FYI. Okay? And also find ribosomes in the mitochondria. But FYI. I'd like you to pay attention to these two locations, bound and free. Okay, today, at the very least, we will try to figure out when our cells make use of free ones, when our cells make use of the bound ones. Why do we need two kinds of ribosomes? Why not just one kind? Okay? Okay, and also I want you to keep in mind that whatever you learned in the pre before the quiz is related to this. Huh? We learned that we transcribe DNA to RNA. Then we learned that our ribosomes translate the mRNA into proteins. Now, let's draw that link. So that's why I ask you where you can find ribosomes. You can find free floating or bound. I'll now be showing you a video. Just to recap what we learned in our previous lesson, yes? What's, R, what's the R R R A? Oh, what's the R R R A? What's R stand for? Is it? Yeah. Oh, it just stands for ribosomal R A. What does it look like? Yeah, what does it do? Like, like, right. Okay. This uh, this R R N A is very special. It can function like an enzyme, so it can help to catalyze the translation process. Something we'll learn this year, uh, we'll end up this year with the circulatory system. So we learn how our heart works. Okay, so let's 
throw the link, transcription, translation, and ribosomes. Let's see how they all, where it takes place and how it takes place and where it can, how everything links together. Okay, this is a recap of what we've already learned. Cells are the smallest living units of an organism. All cells have three things in common, no matter what type of cell they are. All cells have a cell membrane, which separates the inside of the cell from its environment. Cytoplasm, which is a jelly-like fluid, and DNA. Which See is the the mitochondria floating around? There are two broad categories of cells. First category, it is as complex cells. Second, or nothing more. So, what are organelles? Organelle means little organ. Organelles are the specialized parts of a cell that have unique jobs to perform. Let's start with the nucleus, the control center of the cell. The nucleus contains DNA or genetic material. DNA dictates what the cell is going to do and how it's going to do it. Chromatin is the tangled, spread out form of DNA found inside the nuclear membrane. When a cell is ready to divide, DNA condenses into structures known as chromosomes. The nucleus also contains a nucleolus, which is a structure where ribosomes are made. After ribosomes leave the nucleus, they will have the important job of synthesizing or making proteins. Outside the nucleus, the ribosomes and the rest of the organelles float around in cytoplasm, which is the jelly-like substance. Ribosomes may wander freely within the cytoplasm or attach to the endoplasmic reticulum sometimes abbreviated as ER. There are two types of ER. Okay, so at least for now, we know the locations of our ribosomes. Let's draw the next thing. We also learned about transcription and translation. Okay, I'm gonna show you a quick video of transcription and translation. Then we draw the two links together. Okay, this video is a quick one to summarize. Okay, so you just draw this link up. Here is a cell, the basic unit of all living tissue. In most human cells, there is a structure called a nucleus. The nucleus contains the genome. In humans, the genome is split between 23 pairs of chromosomes. Each chromosome contains a long strand of DNA, tiny packaged around proteins called histones. Within the DNA are sections called genes. These genes contain the instructions for making proteins. When a gene is switched on, an enzyme called RNA polymerase attaches to the start of the gene. It moves along the DNA making a strand of messenger RNA out of three bases in the nucleus. The DNA code determines the order in which the three bases are added to the messenger RNA. This process is called transcription. Before the messenger RNA can be used as a template for the production of proteins, it needs to be processed this involves removing and adding sections of RNA. The messenger RNA then moves out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm. Are this alpha what you're asking about? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Protein factories in the cytoplasm, called ribosomes, bind to the messenger RNA. The ribosomes
ribosome reads the code in the messenger RNA to produce a chain made up of amino acids. There are 20 different types of amino acids. Transfer RNA molecules carry the amino acids to the ribosome. The messenger RNA is read three bases at a time. At each trip that is read, a transfer RNA delivers the corresponding amino acid. This is added to a growing chain of amino acids. Once the last amino acid has been added, the chain folds into a complex 3D shape to form the protein. Okay, this is the link that I'd like you to draw that uh, some students don't see. We learned about two things so far. So where does this mRNA go? This mRNA can go to two places. For one, it can go to the ribosomes that are bound to the RER. It can also, or it will go to the ribosomes that are free. Okay? It has to go to the, the ribosomes, right, for the proteins to be put, translated. Okay, this is that link that students are often miss. Okay, so two locations the mRNA can go, the bound ribosomes or to the free ribosomes. Okay, can you take note somewhere in your notes if it's not clear to you? But the beauty of it is that something quite interesting happens. If the mRNA goes to the bound ribosomes, if we go back to that video that I was showing at the very start, watch what happens if an mRNA goes to a bound ribosome. Something very interesting happens. I'm going to zoom a bit up to here. ER. Okay, we left off that we know that there are two kinds of ER, rough and smooth. Watch what happens if the mRNA is brought to the rough ER. There are two types of ER. Rough ER has ribosomes attached to it, and a smooth ER doesn't have ribosomes attached to it. The endoplasmic reticulum is a membrane-enclosed passageway for transporting materials, such as Protein synthesized by ribosomes. Alright, what do you see at this part over here? Do you see that at the bottom, the bottom over here, you see all these yellow things? These are ribosomes. What you're looking at here is the inside of the RER. If I had a camera over here, this is where you're looking at. Okay? Do you notice that this particular ribosome, you know what it's doing? It's like shifting the protein into the space of the RER. Okay, so the protein that's produced isn't produced and secreted. The protein pro translated by this ribosome doesn't go into the open. It actually produces it and kind of extrudes it into the space of the RER. So all of these ribosomes are like sitting at a toilet bowl and they are slowly producing a protein that's going inside this space of the RER. So I'm going to play the video. You look at the bottom. Over here, watch what happens to this ribosome as it produces a protein. It kind of just shifts it in, inside the RER. The plasma material is yeah, a over there? closed passageway for transporting materials. So, so yeah. lots and lots of proteins are floating around inside the RER after translation. And now they are all trapped. They can't, cannot go anywhere. Yeah? Watch what happens next to these proteins. We need to somehow get them out of the RER. As protein synthesized by ribosomes. Proteins and other materials emerge from the endoplasmic reticulum in small vessels. Uh, so this is the next step. My proteins, they have been translated. They are all trapped inside the RER. So the next thing that happens is this. The RER will start to butt off. Okay, start to butt off. Eventually, a vesicle will come out from the RER containing the protein that was trapped inside. 
amount of protein is in the uh, the this vesicle. So that's how we get the proteins out of the RER. There are names for these vesicles. These vesicles are called transport vesicles. Okay, they are called transport vesicles. If you're wondering where you can label all this, my what I'm saying, you can refer to your CA 3.3 today. If you look at CA 3.3, I believe I provided a diagram below. You scroll down, you should be able to see a diagram where it will be quite meaningful for you to take down these points. Right here. Okay? Uh, in fact, I've labeled it for you already. Yeah, so you can refer to this diagram in CA 3.2. If you are the kind uh, that do not look at your CAs when you are revising, and you refer more to your notes, you may want to copy this image and paste in your notes. Although I would advise you will revise everything uh, from your CA to your notes. Okay? So that's the first thing you take note of, that the proteins will come out via these things called transport vesicles. But next, where do they go? Okay, now we finally come to the next organelle that you have learned before, the Golgi apparatus. This is where the vesicles will go next. The next organelle in place is this thing called the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus looks like a lot of pancakes stacked upon each other. The transport vesicle will go there. And then fuse to the Golgi apparatus. You okay? Okay, so let's continue on. Okay, from the Golgi. Protein will be finally out of the cell. 
a large vocabulary I'm introducing today. We call this vesicle over here a secretory vesicle because its purpose is to secrete the protein. The word secrete means to get out of the cell. So two kinds of vesicles. Number one, a transport vesicle. This is just an intermediate vesicle to bring from the area to Golgi. Then there's a secretory vesicle for bringing out of the cell. You can find all this in the image that I provided to you in your CA over here. Yes. Okay, the main ask, are these vesicles made of the same thing as the Golgi apparatus? They are. Remember, everything that has a membrane is made out of phospholipids. So they're all made of the same thing. That's why the vesicle that came out from the RER can fuse to the Golgi apparatus. It is all phospholipid. So it's, they're all made of the same thing. Uh. Okay? Uh, this diagram here shows you exactly what I draw on the whiteboard so that you don't have to draw it. Last time, I always make the students draw everything on the whiteboard. Okay, so you have the RER, protein that's produced, will be transported via transport vesicles to the Golgi. From the Golgi, it will bud off again, and then after that, two secretory vesicles, and you will leave the cell. Okay? That is what I mean by protein trafficking. Proteins actually have a way of moving out of the cell. It's like traffic. Within ourselves, proteins are going everywhere and anywhere. That's why we have uh, these pathways to regulate their movement. Okay, I do not want to overload you today, so this is where I will stop. Okay, this is where I will stop. Yes? Yes. Goji apparatus, can we? Over here, another vesco will bite off. Then after that, a secretory vesco is formed. Then it will fuse to the cell membrane and the protein can leave the cell. Okay? So that's how we will go by things. Uh, if you want to know how this process works, I provided a YouTube video here to summarize the entire process. The endomembrane system is a collection of membrane-based organelles that work together to create, modify, and export cell products such as proteins and lipids. It consists of the nuclear envelope, the rough and smooth endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi apparatus, and several types of vessels. Let's start our talk with endoplasmic reticulum. There are two types of endoplasmic reticulum, rough and smooth. Thank you. 
So that's what we that's all we are covering today. We just want to know how the proteins get out of the cell. Right? And we learned that actually has to go through two uh, two things first, the RER and the protein apparatus. Okay, that's all for today. Uh, you can touch up your notes, or you can go and wash your face. Go and take a water break before your bed. <laughs>